So today, I'm going to teach you guys how to land on a frozen lake. All right, before we hop into this video, we need to make something clear. I am by no means an expert in this field. I'm just the kid with the camera and got a few requests for how to land on ice. So it's it's really a non-event if you boil it down. If you wanna save some time, the answer to the video is keep it straight and don't use your brakes. But there's a lot more to it than just that. Like the condition of the ice, the condition of the lake, what type of lake it is, skis versus tires. There's a million things that go into doing this safely. So take this video with a grain of salt, bring some buddies that have done this before with you so they can kind of show you the ropes and make sure you ask lots of questions and scope out your location before landing. Oh, and figure out if it's legal to land on a lake in your area. Just like seaplanes, some lakes you're not allowed to land on. Let's dive into it. Twenty minutes of this. We just took off of Burlington. I'm with Tom Cox. Tom has the comp air that we do with all the vlogs. Who's the beer run vlog and a few other ones. Uh, what's up? Why aren't you flying your plane right now? We're uh, doing some maintenance on the thing. Actually, I'm waiting to do maintenance to get into a warm hangar because it's been it, so cold. I know. It's cold in Wisconsin. That's not good for him, but that is good for us. Today, <laughs> we are landing on a frozen lake. a how to land on uh, on ice, how to land on frozen lakes. Now let's just start off by saying that was in the room. No form of off airport landings is 100% safe. You need to make a decision as a pilot on if it's worth that to you. For example, my dad has a J3 Cub 1946. Just spent two years restoring it. He would not go land on a frozen lake because that is his baby. My plane, it holds a lot of value to me, but at the same time, the experience is just as rewarding. So, not all frozen lakes are safe for landing. A good way to determine if a lake is good to land on is if you see UTVs or trucks out on the ice. But just know your local lakes. Basically, if you're unsure, just get out, uh, get out on the ice yourself before you bring your plane out. Check it out. Uh, talk to fishermen. No know where there might be springs in, a, in certain bodies of water or where moving water is, rivers and other streams even feed lakes. Just uh, all ice conditions could be different. Just uh, know your local conditions before you go landing on it. My buddy Kevin is a local sheriff from the Lake Geneva area. And he had mentioned Lake Geneva is a spring-fed lake, which means it takes a lot longer to freeze over. So you could have a lake Two lakes right next to each other, one completely frozen over, and then one that has spots in it because it has springs. Moving water is a big no-no for landing on lakes. If you see inlets, steer clear of them. Anything moving water takes longer to freeze over. But when we come down, we're going to be looking for a few things. We're going to be looking for ice heaves, ice holes, and anything else we could possibly hit on landing. And the last thing you want to do is check your local pilot reports, ask your friends what lakes people have been landing on and how recently they've been doing it. The local DNR here in Wisconsin has made ice reports for all the, uh, I guess, high traffic fishing, ice fishing uh, lakes in the state. How it's landing on the ice is we'll go ahead and look at those reports. Another thing to consider is tailwheel versus tricycle gear. Tail diggers handle soft conditions and like this a lot better than tricycle gear. Tricycle gear planes can't still land on ice with proper techniques. One thing I would highly recommend is taking off any wheel pants you have on the plane. Usually the Chief has wheel pants on it, not when we're going to be landing on ice or off the airport in the winter. The last thing that is extremely important is when you're coming into land and you touch down, keep it straight and don't use your brakes. Let inertia do the work. All right, so now we're at the landing part. The landing part is important because, well, if you don't do it right, things are gonna go wrong. And they go wrong quick. You don't wanna side load the aircraft, especially when there's no traction. It's easy to ground loop and tip a wing. So when you're landing on ice, you need to keep it straight. And like I just said, don't use your brakes. 
I'll demonstrate it here in the video so you can kind of see what I'm talking about, but it should be self-explanatory. I figure out where the wind is. In this case, it's out of the northwest, more so lean to the west. So I'm gonna fly an upwind, a crosswind, a downwind, a base, and then I'm gonna do a quick touch and go, put the wheels down, and or do an inspection pass, whichever I feel comfortable with. And then I'll go around and I'll fly the pattern one more time. Just like any other landing, you wanna set yourself up for a nice, stable approach. In this case, we're gonna be doing a soft field landing. So we're gonna get it nice and slow, gently three pointed on there. Once I put the plane down, I just stay on the rudders, no brakes, and then I'll ride it out until we come to a stop. Once we come close to a stop, I'll kind of show you what I mean by no directional control. I'm gonna kick in some left rudder and drift the plane southbound, kind of heading over to where we usually park. After I land, the rest of the guys are coming in and they're keeping nice spacing in between each other to make sure if they need to go around, they have the ability to. Another thing I want to mention is this video was shot over a few days. So you'll see a few shots of different people in the plane and different planes being flown. Now, while doing my due diligence of making this video, I connected with some of the more experienced pilots in my community here in Wisconsin and asked what their input was for landing on ice. This is what they said. When you plan to land on ice, especially with little to no directional control once you're on the surface, always have the out of landing and taking off in the same stretch that you land in. There's been times when people got in trouble because they weather vaned into the wind and they couldn't get the aircraft turned around to taxi back and take off. So always plan to depart exactly where you stopped. Another one of my friends said, the difference between landing on a slick lake with no ice is drastically different than landing on one with a few inches or a few feet of snow. And the hazards of landing on a lake with fresh powder is that you can't really see what you're landing on. You don't know about ice heaves, holes, or other things that you could be hitting, but it is a little softer. My uneducated advice is put on skis or tundra tires and take out some of the air pressure in those wheels. That'll make it a little easier. landing we're gonna do a full stop taxi back over the coastline right now setting up trimming up for 60 miles per hour i'll be doing a soft field short field ish landing we'll trim back we got to point it directly into the wind right now winds are out of the northwest but we're gonna pull it back to idle i still got plenty of room here i'm gonna slip a little bit lose that altitude now, we do have a really long lake. We're about working with about 7,000 feet in this stretch right here. We don't need anywhere near that, especially while I'm by myself. I'll slowly pull it back. Oh, all right, that was it. Hold it back, hold it back. All right, hold that stick back and work those rudders to keep it straight. Barely touching the rudders, barely any movement. All right, more slowing down nicely, carpet in. I'm gonna do a little drift. The left here. Oh, I see a little ice hole, so I wanna avoid that. I almost forgot to mention, it doesn't end when you land on the ice. If you plan to stay, you should bring some sort of cover for your cowling. I cover the prop. A sleeping bag or a cover will do just fine. You wouldn't imagine how much heat you lose through a metal prop. Another thing we do is we stake down the planes. An ice stake, which you drill into the ice, will do just fine for the tail in most situations. And the first time we landed on ice, as soon as my foot hit the ice, I went, I just fell on my ass. So another thing, get slip on ice shoes. Like we're about to go do with John. The aggressive one? Yeah, I think the more aggressive ones. Out on the lake. 70 bucks. So I can hand prop an airplane on the lake. 
Now, let's just be clear. I covered a very, very small part of the complicated subject of landing on ice. There's a lot more to it. So make sure you do your research and figure out if it's something that you should do. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys in next week's vlog.